What's going on guys, this is Induced Rhino here back for another drift build in Forza Horizon 2. So today what we are going to be taking a look at here is the beautiful, iconic 2011 Lotus Evora S. One of the most beautiful Lotuses and also one of the most beautiful sports cars in my opinion ever made. This is just such a beautiful car with the Jaguar F-Type R the Mercedes SLK AMG and the Porsche Cayman GTS. Those three and this one are probably the most beautiful sports cars in the game. And I might do a drift build on those other beautiful sports cars. But for now we're just going to be taking a look at this. The iconic Lotus Evora. So they did make a few of these models but this is the S model and the only one in the game. So it's the second most fastest and powerful Evora ever made. And you get, it has a V6 engine from a Toyota GR, yeah, a Toyota GR V6 engine, that's right. And if we have a look at the speed, we've got speed of 6.7, about a good speed for a sports car, about as fast as the Porsche Cayman. You got good acceleration launch, really good launch there, 8.7. And we've got okay handling and okay braking. Got 345 horsepower, so it's about as powerful as the Porsche Cayman GTS, which we tried to do a drift build on, actually. 295 torques, and weighs just over 3,000 pounds. We've only got 39% font power. Actually, that is a bit... Yeah, so we have got less power in this than the Jaguar F-Type R, but that doesn't not ruin it's gorgeous looks and it does not ruin its design yeah no we'll just give it the v8 why not we don't want it to be too fast we want it to be powerful but not too fast okay we won't worry about an aspiration swap hmm uh, yeah we'll just put the Put the stock engine back in, then give it an aspiration swap. Change my mind. Yeah, that wing just looks gorgeous, and you get that green color in the outside of the wings. It's the same color as the body, so need a lot of grip when we do a drift build. Well, for most people, or some people like me. So, not going to fully upgrade the tire width, but it'll do. Okay. So give it the transmission because we don't worry about clutch because we don't do manual clutch. We just do manual uh, drive line. Yeah, just give it a sport. Yeah, like I said in my last drift build, everything, everything in the engine you should give a race upgrade, except for the flywheel. But everything else you should give a sport sporty upgrade. So everything. Everything apart from sport, everything apart from the sport settings, you should give a sport upgrade. But in the race, in the engine settings, give race mode because you need the engine to be good. And weight reduction, yeah, why not? Uh, now we'll just give it a sport weight reduction, yeah. Okay, so the engine, we've got to give it a race intake. So we've got 400, just over 400 horsepower, so we're getting there. And uh, when you're doing a drift ball, you shouldn't worry too much about the fuel system. And sometimes you shouldn't worry about the ignition, it depends. So we need to give it a race camshaft. It's probably one of the most important things in an engine. That is if you're making, giving a speed build. It's one of the most important, it's the most important thing in the engine when you're giving a car a speed build definitely okay so give everything in the engine settings except for the flywheel race upgrade but everything else the tires the drivetrain give a sport upgrade I've said that enough okay so give it a race turbo yep okay so intercooler yep race intercooler so we've got 691 horsepower, nearly 700. Can we just get to 700? Yeah, we can. 702 horsepower, but... When I have in my tiles, like... 
an amount of horsepower drift build, like for example when I did the drift build of Chevrolet Camaro in my title it said 1000 horsepower drift build, and the same thing with the modern Dodge Charger, modern Fast and Furious Dodge Charger, it said 800 horsepower drift build. But I'd only, so let's quickly change the settings, I'd only do that in the title if it were between 800 and 1000 horsepower. Okay, so, just going to take a quick look, so, got that beautiful look. We're not going to take a full look at it in photo mode, because we're not giving it a review. And the interior, uh, it's not got an alright interior, but the dials are s similar to the dials on the Lotus x -Sage Or the Hennessy Venom, because the Hennessy Venom comes from the Lotus x -Sage. But the rest of the interior doesn't look like the Lotus x -Sage. it just looks like another simple interior. And the sound is just awesome because we have the stock engine but with an aspiration swap and some engine upgrades. If you couldn't hear me properly because of the engine, I just said we've got the exact same engine, we've still got the V6 in there, but we've given it an aspiration swap and fully upgrade we've given it an aspiration swap and fully upgrade the engine. So I just did that on purpose back there because I need to turn around because that's not a really good spot to go because you're just heading down the highway. That would be a good place to go if you were doing a speed build though. So, I just smashed it there, but... When I'm doing a test drive or a review, you should not you should keep the car flawless. But when you're doing a drift build or rally build, you can crash as many times as you want. I think. Yeah, but try not to crash too much. Because, yeah, I'm not the best drifter. But, uh, I just need, I just don't know how to drift at the right time, like I said in my last video, don't know how to dodge the cars when they're coming in the corners. Okay, so that wasn't a very successful drift. Alright, so, uh, stupid golf course, if only it wasn't there. Now it should be there, it's really good. Yeah, but on the Xbox 360 version, you can't go onto the golf course, so what's the point of having the golf course in the Xbox 360 version, when you can't go in it? But, in Forza Horizon 1, there's a golf course so that you can drive on all the courses. And that's on the Xbox 360, and you can't even do that on Forza Horizon 2, Xbox 360. It's just so weird. Alright, so, this car has really good grip, and not sure about the suspension. Because you could only, it's hard to tell the suspension when you're in a game, but it's easy to tell the suspension when you're driving in real life. Okay, so, oh, damn. Why am I always crashing? Alright, so we're getting somewhere now. We're getting somewhere. Oh, what? We didn't lose those points? It wasn't a very big collision though, but anyway. Okay, so, let's just, instead of heading straight down this road and going too, straight too much, because you shouldn't go straight too much when you're doing a drift build, when you're drifting a, a car that's just been, when you're doing a drift build video, or drifting a car that's just been built in a drift build, you shouldn't go down straight roads or else it will be, just the speed build. So we're just gonna head to the airport. Why not? Uh, that was a bit of a fail, but it doesn't really matter if you lose the points, it's just how testing how drift build is just testing how this car can drift, how the cars can drift, how the gripping is, and how fun they are to drive. All about fun and testing. That's basically it. So we're not gonna really do that along the runway because you've seen me do that. Seeing me do that is just a bit boring, so we're just gonna drift down the streets a little. Well, not the streets, the overpass. Oh! What? What? That was just. We just flipped! Why am I getting so surprised? But it just flipped. Ah, okay. So. We just keep going down there, and then we'll just get out of the airport, just wanted to have a quick 
right around half the airport. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Once again, we flip and we land back on the wheels. But we still got damage. So, not only does is this car so beautiful and has really good grip, but it actually drifts rather well. It's just me who doesn't have the drifting skills. But if you were to give this drift car to Slap Train R12 Gaming, they would... I bet they would have a ball in it. And I'm not sh I'm not actually sure if they've drifted this car, but if they haven't, well, if you're any of you are watching this R12 game on Slap Train, you probably not well give this car a drift build right now. Even though we haven't been drifting for very long, it's still a fun car to drift around because I just found that out at the airport. Yeah, I should start going to the airport on my drift builds at Tesla. That's where the fun really starts in the drift builds. Because now. No, like, but at the start I wasn't having very much fun before we went to the airport, but now I am, even when I'm failing. This is just amazing car, amazing car to drift. My could this is just amazing, so fun to drift, and it's not actually hard to drift like it was in the Camaro, and it's not as when we did the Porsche, the drift build on the Porsche Macan about a couple of days ago, we uh, had a bit of understeer because it was all wheel drive and it wasn't as fun to drift. But I said it was the best SUV drift car. So, yeah, so if R12 Gaming or Slap Train haven't drifted this car, haven't given this car a drift build, they should. And if they are watching this video and they decide to, give me a shout out. Actually, I'm just kidding. You don't have to. But at least, maybe do. Because this car is just so fun to drift. Literally, literally, I could drift this thing all day. But unfortunately, we got to stop. So see how we do on this corner. Oh, oh. Had a bit of a drift tap there. Without losing the wing. So, that was so much fun. I could keep going, but we have to stop there. And next week I will start making longer drift builds. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. Leave a like. And stay tuned for the next drift build or next commentary. And I'm out. Bye bye.